Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So I'm out here on the training pitch, so I thought I'd show you all the drills that I'm going to be doing. But first things first, I'm going to get into my warm-up, and then we'll get into today's training session. So let's go. So I always begin my training session with a thorough 10-minute warm-up, and I do try and show you as much of it as possible, but I still get quite a few questions asking me how to perform a thorough, effective warm-up. So this is the way that's always worked really well for me. I start with some forwards movements to some backpedaling, some diagonal movements from side to side, basically trying to replicate all the different movements that I'll be performing during my training session just at a lower intensity it's a good opportunity to get oxygen to those working muscles and also lengthen those muscle fibers slightly as well to prevent injury but on top of preventing injury which is the most important thing of course you want to go out there and you want to be kicking balls straight away and things like that but if you do that right away without warming up your body that's a quick way to get an injury that's going to keep you off the pitch but on top of that warm-up actually boosts your performance so even though you want to get straight into your training session and get going if if you do a warm-up before you're going to get a lot more out of your training session because those muscle fibers are going to be more activated so you'll be more explosive and efficient through those exercises and you'll become a better player for it so after I've done all the different movements, I'll then go into a lot of dynamic stretches and you always want to keep them dynamic because your muscles are moving during your training session, you're not standing still. Then I always go into some muscle activation exercises just to really fire up all those little fibers in those hard to warm up places of the body. So I'll go through a few different varieties just with these exercise bands here which you can find online. Mine's a little bit old as you'll see in a minute. I actually bit the dust here so it's time for me to go and get a new band. So I'll be getting on Google looking up some new exercise bands to get for next session. Then I move straight into the first drill that I'm going to be doing in today's training session and this one is all about dribbling. So as you can see here I've set up a gate at the beginning and then I'm going up to the three poles here going around each pole doing a figure of eight to get through the entire course then exploding back to the starting gate where I stop the ball. So a really good one for wingers but also central midfielders as well. You want to be able to twist and turn on the ball with close control keeping it as close to your foot as possible while you're traveling at speed so being able to turn sharply is a very important attribute for wingers but as i said if you're in the central midfield as well if you can turn sharply on the ball you can beat players without actually performing any moves whatsoever just by keeping the ball close to your foot and exploding away from them then when we reach that final pole as you can see just drive back to the start and put my foot on the ball so what I did was I did five going out and turning to the right, and then I did five going out turning to the left, just to making sure I'm getting an equal amount of touches with the inside and outside of my foot. It's very important to get comfortable on both sides. So then I moved into a crossing activity and this one's really simple to set up. So all you need is a few balls out on the touchline there and then I've got a pole acting as the defender. If you don't have a pole you can use anything you have lying around the house just to act as an object. Just a bit of a frame of reference. Then in the box there I've got two small goals which is my target area for my crosses. If you don't have access to these you can use cones or anything else just to mark out a bit of an area for you to aim for with those crosses. So all you're going to do is drive towards that pole, nudging the ball, keeping it close to the body. Then you perform a small simple move whether it's a body feint a step over whatever you can do at high speed just to offset the defender for a split second then you're going to accelerate away so you want a deliberate change of speed so after you perform the move explode out of there and try and get the cross in as early as possible trying to aim for that area between the six yard box and the penalty area this is a really dangerous area to put the ball in a lot of goals are scored in this area from crosses so that's what you should be aiming for getting your head up you have more time than you think in a game so you can pick Pick out a person or pick out an area and try and be consistent with it as well. Whether it's in the air or you can even get it on the ground. It's a very effective cross as well, especially if your team's on the counter attack. If you can play it along the ground, your attacker can come onto it first time and it's a very easy finish for them. You're trying to make your striker's job as easy as possible. So I went through this one probably about 15 to 20 times on the right foot and then I went out to the left side and performed the exact same thing. So if you are a winger and you're working on your crossing, I would recommend working on both sides because there will be times in a match where you might end up on the other side of the pitch. You never really know. Even if you start the game on the right side, sometimes in a game you can interchange with your other winger and swap for a second. So you want to be effective on both sides and be able to provide service to your strikers. So as you can see here, just trying to get some reps in performing small basic moves just some simple step overs easy moves to perform at top speed that will unbalance the defenders just so you can get away from them but the most important thing is that you accelerate after you perform the move it's not the move itself that gets you away from the opponent it's the acceleration after you perform the move 
Then I set up a winger specific finishing drill, very similar to the one Sam, the technique trainer and I were working on in my previous video. And if you haven't had a chance to check out that video yet, I'm gonna put a link on the screen right now to it so you can go over and give it a watch. And I would recommend you would as well because it's a great training session. Sam set up all the drills and it was very high level, really applicable to wingers and other positions on the pitch. And it's gonna take your game to the next level. So go and give that a watch. But the last drill in that video, we worked on a very similar situation here. The only difference was where I've placed the orange cones, he had multi-colored cones, so that when he was playing the ball along the ground to me, I had to scan over my shoulder, call out one of those colors, and then regain my focus, take my first touch towards that first pole, cut inside, and finish far post. So we've adapted that in a way that we can work on this individually with this drill. So instead of someone playing the ball in, you're kicking the ball up in the air, then you've got to turn away for a second, knock the tennis ball off one of the cones. So you're working on being comfortable taking your eyes off the ball for a split second so that you can check your surroundings. And then you have to regain your focus, adjust to the flight of the ball, a little bit of decision making involved as well. Then you're proceeding to drive towards that first pole, cut inside, and again, trying to find that far side, whether it be bottom corner or top corner, because these areas are very difficult for the goalkeeper to save. So I probably went through this drill about 30 times, so a lot of good quality reps in here. All right guys, so that's the session done. And even though there was a lot of work, it was only three drills, just getting lots and lots of reps. So all stuff that's really relevant to my position as a winger. So we began with the dribbling, a lot of weaving dribbling, and you need to have that as a winger, the ability to keep close control of the ball at high speeds and be able to change directions and weave in and out. And then we moved into a crossing drill, doing some on both sides. And then we went into a finishing drill as well, kind of working on what Sam and I were working on the technique trainer in the previous video, but just incorporating a solo version of it so that you can do it by yourself even when you don't have a training partner. Trying to aim for that far side of the goal, that's really difficult for the goalkeeper to save from that angle. So some really good stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you incorporate some of these drills into your training sessions. Make sure you check out my Instagram page as well. I always post new drills on there. Some stuff I don't even post on YouTube. So make sure you check out that. I'll put the link in the description box below. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in my next video.